y'all, my name is Jory and I'm the Black Medical Anthropologist. Today's video is going to be a get ready with me and I'll be discussing what I did to maintain my crippling mental health while in medical school. This will likely be my last video discussing topics around medical school as I'll be transitioning to topics around medical anthropology. If you like this video and want to see topics on medical anthropology such as spirituality, religion, and culture, please like, share, and subscribe. Now let's get into it. I definitely lost my mind in medical school. Um, I've never been so mentally ill in my life. <laughs> and I, I'm sure that a lot of doctors can echo um, that that was something that happened to them as well, or, you know, just along the journey of medicine in general, is that this field has a lot of its challenges and um, it takes a little bit more enforcement to maintain your mental health. I had never been to therapy prior to going to medical school, but I definitely required it once I got there. In my first year of medical school, I just had a lot of issues with transitioning to medical school, transitioning to a new city, and I found myself feeling very isolated and alone. I went to the mental health center that luckily offered free mental health services for medical students and I was able to be seen by a um, therapist. She was my first therapist ever as I mentioned before. As my first therapist ever I feel like she did a good job. I think that she accomplished what I needed at that time which was support. I believe that she practiced cognitive behavioral therapy and traditional talk therapy. I felt like I was more so dealing with more personal challenges and like I said, adjusting to a new environment more than I was dealing with my struggles in medical school, but it was definitely beneficial for what I needed at that time. After my time with her, I was transferred to another provider because she was moving and having had her own practice. My next provider was a provider that focused on psychodynamic therapy. Psychodynamic therapy is a form of therapy that helps you analyze why you have certain thought processes or why you're repeating the same types of behavior. It analyzes the past in order to help you in the present. So once again, I would say that that was more focused on personal issues than it was issues around medical school. But I find that because of the stress of medical school, you tend to have all your your trauma, all of your things that you had buried. They kind of come to light, especially if they're around like your support system or your relationships and things. Because medical school is so challenging, like you obviously need a support system. So the psychodynamic therapy helped a lot with me processing some patterns that I had. Um, I found it really helpful in a very short period of time. By the time that I had psychodynamic therapy, I was already starting to feel more connected to my classmates and like to the area. Not completely, like I still definitely had my struggles, but I was feeling more adjusted to medical school at that time. I had a new foundation because I've gotten a couple shades darker because of the summer. Boop boop, I love being darker. I feel closer to myself when I'm more tan. But I feel like this foundation is a little bit red. <laughs> So I'm gonna keep going, but if my skin doesn't look correct, don't come for me in the comments. My second year of medical school was when I started to be diagnosed with multiple different mental health disorders. The first one being premenstrual dysphoric disorder or PMDD. PMDD is when you have a lot more symptoms than PMS for your cycle. So it's kind of like a more disruptive PMS. For me, it manifested as extreme fatigue, really really low mo motivation, brain fog, like just terrible brain fog. I, I would be mid-sentence and have no idea what I was talking about. Extreme rejection sensitivity. It was really bad. Like I'm not gonna lie like I was and I had it for a very long time. Like I would have it for two weeks at a time. I kind of had an inkling that I had PMDD because we learned about it in class. I decided to get an appointment with my provider who diagnosed me as her first patient ever to have um, PMDD, which I thought was kind of crazy. It's kind of rare, but I also think that it's probably underdiagnosed. She told me that I could try serotonin reuptake inhibitors, which is the same kind of medication that we use for depression and anxiety. It was FDA approved for treatment for PMDD. So you could either take it every day or you could take it the weeks before your period. I decided to take it the weeks before my period. I didn't have any symptom relief. I also tried to take it daily and I didn't really have any symptom relief for my PMDD, but I did notice that I had less anxiety. So that was a welcomed side effect. I mean, it treats anxiety, so that makes sense. But I just, I guess I never acknowledged how much anxiety I actually was experiencing. But yeah, so I decided to go off of it because I didn't like the side effects that I was experiencing. I felt like I was empty. I felt very numb 
it affected my libido. It was just, it was not what I wanted in my life at that time. Then I decided to try birth control, which was the second line of therapy for it. And to be honest, birth control just made me gain weight. Like I think it was like three months that I was on birth control. I gained like 10 pounds. So I decided to get off it despite I do think that it helped my symptoms a lot more than the SSRIs did. So if you're suffering with PMDD, I would recommend trying both because you just never know what your body's going to respond with. Ultimately, I decided to do more stress relieving habits such as like light aerobic activity, like taking a walk and things like that, getting out in nature. So I decided to take omega threes and I also decided to start taking love wellness supplements. This is not a sponsorship, but I would love to have one. Love wellness, if you're watching, hit me up. Took the daily love vitamin, mood bliss, and their omega-3, and they helped significantly. Like, I feel like I had so much more energy. I had a lot less rejection sensitivity, less brain fog. I just, I had a lot of symptom relief and I was very impressed with their products. I stopped taking them because I feel like now that I'm out of my high stress environment, I have less symptoms. They're a little bit more manageable. Like I just try to eat well, focus on stress relieving techniques as opposed to taking medication or taking supplements. My third year was when I started to get diagnosed with um, other mental health disorders. I went to see a psychiatrist after I was having a really rough time coping with the stress of clinical rotations as well as some, some personal stressors. I was diagnosed with adjustment disorder with anxiety and also ADHD. The ADHD diagnosis was a bit of a surprise for me. I felt like, yeah, I might've had some of the symptoms as a kid. I've always been able to hyper focus. I've always been a little bit hyperactive, especially as an adult, I feel like my, my brain is very hyperactive. For the ADHD, I tried Adderall extended release. Like I tried a low dose Adderall at first. I felt like it wasn't doing enough. And then I went up in my dose. After I went up in my dose, I feel like I had significant um, symptom relief. So I stuck with that in the duration of time that I was in clinical rotations. And some of the time that I was studying first step. I ended up not having access to my provider. So I did for the most part with step deal with it on my own. I tried to study in different locations or um, I would body double where you have someone else who was there to motivate you. I didn't really like schedules. I more so like to stick with goals because schedules kind of stress me out because I'm, I have time management issues. Oh girl, I don't know. We don't have to see about this. <laughs> If I was having a hard time focusing, I would try to leave the house so that I could be in a more focused environment. And I was able to manage through it, but I definitely still struggle with it. So yeah, that's how I manage my ADHD. And for the adjustment disorder, I ordered this book off Amazon. Dialectical Behavioral Therapy focuses on a lot of things that I felt like I could benefit from. It focuses on mindfulness, interpersonal effectiveness, emotional regulation, and distress tolerance. And I felt like for the time that I was in medical school, like I needed help with distress tolerance, emotional regulation, and like resolving conflict. That helped significantly with my adjustment disorder. I don't think that I meet the criteria for adjustment disorder anymore. Thank God. I feel like the most helpful thing that I learned from DBT was how to increase my distress tolerance. It just made me feel closer to myself more than anything. I started to practice things like soothing with music and carrying crystals and lavender oil in my white coat when I went to school, taking weekly bubble baths to reset and set intention. I learned concepts like radical acceptance, like accepting the things that you can't change trying to work on the things that you can change and letting everything go to a higher power that, that you can't. That wasn't even in the advanced parts of distress tolerance. Like that was just like some very basic things. It's like using your senses to help soothe yourself, but they helped tre tremendously. And they also encouraged me to create more safe spaces for myself and just create more space for me. During my unofficial mental health break, I switched my therapist because I was using Talkspace through the school for a while. I'm sure a lot of people benefit from the online therapy options, but I think that for the level of things that I was dealing with, it just simply wasn't enough. So I started to see a therapist who was more trauma-informed and we practiced therapy under the 
the guise of cognitive behavioral therapy. We did traditional talk therapy. We also um, had some elements of dialectical behavioral therapy and cognitive processing therapy, which is a, a subcategory of, of cognitive behavioral therapy that focuses more on how you process your trauma and the, the destructive and maladaptive thought processes that you may have around incidences and like basically changing that. And I've been having therapy for about a year with this therapist. I feel like I've had a lot of progress and I'm really proud of myself. I've dealt with a lot of loss. I've dealt with a lot of trauma and you know, I'm proud of how far I've gotten in therapy. Some honorable mentions for things that help my mental health would be making candles, like just having a creative outlet where I can have a flow state and just quiet my mind. Praying more. I've I've bought prayer books. I found this one particularly helpful. I really didn't even set my face. Like I y'all, it's been a minute and it shows. <laughs> like like I didn't even set my concealer. Anyways, another honorable mention would just be my support system. People that I had that I could lean on like while I was in school, like around me for my classmates, along with my close friends that I could rely on just to hear me vent and like honestly validate me because the stuff that I was going through, like for a medical student, for somebody in medicine was very normal, but it was very validating to like tell people who weren't in medicine and them tell me like, what is that like that was that was crazy and i would say that over time like my symptoms have decreased significantly um i still have my days i still struggle with ptsd and adhd but i'm a lot better than where i was and that's definitely in part because i asked for help like if i hadn't consistently asked for help i don't know where i would be today if you're somebody in medicine if you're somebody in medical school check out your student health center to see if they offer any services for medical students because a lot of the times they will um mental health services because they know that we're going through it. I'm pretty much done. I'm gonna do my lips off camera and put on some mascara and come back for the final conclusion. All right, y'all, this is the finished look. I really like it. I cleaned up the eye makeup a little bit. Um, I wasn't too sure if I like the lipstick or not, but it's growing on me now that I see it on camera. This is my outfit. I'm going to a concert later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope that my story was helpful to you all. Um, I always try to share my stories in order to give people insight as to what they could do as well. I hope that if you're struggling with your mental health, you find something that works well for you. If you've gone through a stressful time, could you please, in the comments, let us know what helps you get through it. I will see you guys next video. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Bye.